The last thing any parent ever wants to hear come out of their child's mouth is, I want to be a drummer. Fortunately for most parents, most kids want to play the electric guitar, an instrument that A, can be turned down, and B, doesn't take up half a room. But for you unlucky ones, life's going to be a real bummer because your kid wants to be a drummer. Of course, you already knew this long before they asked you to sign them up for lessons and buy them a kit because they've been banging and tapping on shit since they were still in the womb. Drumming just seems to be in their DNA, which is weird since neither you nor your partner have even the slightest sense of rhythm. Your kid might not yet be able to keep a steady beat, but he was able to keep steadily bugging you until you eventually gave in and bought him a drum kit. And ever since, you've had a steady headache that won't quit. All drummers are weirdos, and no two are exactly alike. But whether they start playing at the age of 5 or the age of 50, drummers typically progress down a similar path as they go from blow to pro. In this video, I'm going to show how drummers grow as their playing evolves with the more that they know. So, let's go! Part 1. Flam People who want to learn to play an instrument like the guitar or the piano have to actually get their hands on one before they can stop practicing. But anyone with two pencils or two chopsticks can start practicing the drums right now. A few pots and pans, maybe a couple of buckets, and you've practically got yourself a whole kit to practice on. But you don't really need a full drum set when you're just starting out. You can't even keep a steady beat on one drum, let alone an entire kit, which is why your instructor wants you to stay focused on the snare drum for a while to learn the rudiments. But your dream isn't to be a snare drummer. You were born to rock, not march. So you ignore your teacher's advice and proceed to bang away at the full kit every time you pick up your drumsticks. Your awful, uncoordinated, offbeat playing sounds terrible to your neighbors, but you don't care what they think. They're not like you. You much to the beat of a different drummer, one who can't keep time yet. But even if simple quarter notes still give you trouble, even if the only time you can correctly play a flam is when you accidentally drop your sticks on the floor, you keep banging away at the drums. And slowly but surely, over time, you start getting better. Being better than terrible still isn't good, though. You've got a long way to go before anyone refers to you as a good drummer. Annoying drummer, shitty drummer, you hear these a lot. Frankly, you're just happy people are calling you a drummer at all. The fact that they are gives you the false sense that you're ready to start jamming with other musicians. Since just about all of your friends play the guitar, you invite one of them over to jam. Your friend isn't much better at the guitar than you are at the drums. After lots of awkward silence, you go back and forth telling the other to just play something and that you'll follow along. But since the guitarist only knows a few simple riffs, you can barely keep a basic 4-4 beat. You guys just end up playing what kind of sounds like a really bad cross between smoke on the water and smells like teen spirit over and over again. That first jam session might have smelled like teen spirit and sounded like shit, but it felt fucking awesome. Playing music, if you can call it that, gave you a high unlike anything you've ever experienced. Well, besides drugs. But as far as natural highs go, rocking out is as high as you've ever gotten. So now you and your addictive personality can look forward to spending the rest of your life forever chasing the intensity of that initial high. Part 2. Jam After the success of that first jam session, in spite of not being able to play a single song correctly, you're hooked. You can't wait to jam again, and again and again. So you relentlessly harass every guitarist you know to come over and jam with you on the weekends. That still leaves you plenty of time for solo practice during the week. And every day, much to the dismay of your neighbors, for hours and hours you practice your ass off. Like so many of the drummers you idolize, for you, drumming has become an obsession. You got a bad case of OCD, obsessed with conquering the drums. Since you want to eventually be able to play difficult songs by Rush like YYZ, you learn to channel your OCD. Since you dream of someday being in the limelight, you're driven to exercise your free will and double down on drum lessons. By strictly following your instructor's rhythm method, you're a working man on a mission who's going to stick it out until the countdown to virtuosity is over and your drumming becomes second nature. You've still got a long way to go before that happens, but between the lessons, hours of daily practice, and weekend jam sessions with friends, your drumming and overall musicianship is developing rapidly. You now know what triplets are, can throw in an occasional drum fill without throwing off the entire drum beat, and perhaps most telling of all, you can now say the word paradiddle without laughing like a maniac. However, the word pantaflafla still gives you a little chuckle. Every time you jam with one of your guitarist friends, your playing gets a little stronger, but the friendship gets a little weaker. You resent them for not obsessing over their instrument to the absurd level that you do. To you, drumming isn't just some little fat hobby. It's your entire identity. You take it more seriously than school, work, relationships, personal hygiene, or even basic health. You, like any drummer with potential, are literally crazy about the drums. So before long, 
you outgrow jamming with these less than passionate guitarists and start looking for some real musicians to jam with. Do you want to show off your love of music with a comfortable, stylish, and affordable t-shirt like this one? How about one of these? You can find shirts, mugs, stickers, and all sorts of other funny music-related merch at musicbsharp.com. Whether you're looking for a gift to give a music-loving friend or just want something for yourself you can use to make that friend jealous, at musicbsharp.com you'll find what you're looking for. musicbsharp.com Part 3 Band Now that you've been playing the drums for a while and can keep a fairly steady beat, you've grown bored with jamming in the basement. You're ready to go out, get on stage, and rock out. So you decide to start a band and recruit two guitarists for the project. One of them you chose because he's the only person you know who owns a bass and agreed to play it in the band until you guys can find an actual bassist, which will be never because good bassists are even harder to find than the elusive half leprechaun, half unicorn. But you do find a singer, and the four of you start putting together a set of originals and covers to play when you finally land that first gig. And eventually you do. It doesn't matter that the gig is in some dive bar you've never heard of. You're incredibly excited. And also incredibly confused because you haven't put any thought into how you're going to get your drum kit to the gig. One thing's for sure, it ain't fitting in the back of your 20-year-old Honda Civic. So you frantically start texting everyone you know who has a truck or a van. Eventually, you find a friend whose mom drives a minivan and is willing to let you use it for the night. As you're breaking down your kit and loading it into the minivan, one of the biggest downsides of being a drummer hits you. And I'm not talking about the constant risk of a stick accidentally flying out of your hand while playing and coming back down to crack you in the face. I mean the fact that you have to break down, load up, unload, set up, play, break down, and again load up your entire kit for every single show. You ask your guitarist and bassist to help you, but they say that as much as they'd like to help, they're too busy loading their own gear. So you ask your singer since he's not doing anything. With a big smile, he agrees to help, but then proceeds to walk right past you and goes over to flirt with the MILF who let you use our minivan. By the time you get your kit set up, you're already exhausted and drenched in sweat. You sit down on the drum throne for a moment while your guitarist and bassist tune their instruments. You should be checking to make sure your drums are tuned properly, but you still haven't been playing long enough to know that they even need to be tuned at all. So instead of tuning your drums, you do what all novice drummers do and all guitarists and bassists at any skill level hate. Even though it's not time for sound check, you check the sound of your drums by busting out random beats while your bassist and guitarist are still trying to tune their instruments. They both tell you to shut the fuck up, but since you can't hear them over your playing, you keep banging away with a big stupid grin on your face. Once you guys are all set up and waiting to get called to play, you and your bandmates wander around the club talking to random people, hyping up the performance you're about to give. To help them relax before going on stage, your singer has a drink, your guitarist has a smoke, and your bassist has a handful of pills he tosses down his throat and swallows without so much as a drop of water. Though you get offered a sip, a puff, and a pill, you decline all three. You don't want anything to fuck with the laser-like focus you plan on bringing to the stage. Of course, you realize that after your show, your bandmates will likely focus on fucking with you for being such a teetotaling prude. But like most drummers, you don't give a shit what your bandmates think of you. Or anyone else for that matter. The only thing you do care about is getting on stage and rocking out. And now, the time has finally come. When the announcer calls your band up to the stage, you weave your way through the crowd to get there. Although, since the club isn't even a quarter of the way full, you really didn't have to weave and could have just easily walked in a straight line to the stage. As you ascend up the stairs, you feel the fiery house lights on your face and a kaleidoscope of butterflies in your stomach. Look it up. That's what a group of butterflies are called. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Though you vomit in your mouth just a little bit as you take the throne, you swallow it with the same ease your pill-popping basis down that handful of horse tranquilizers he took earlier. After making a few minor last-minute adjustments to your kit, you take a deep breath, grab your sticks, and once the other members give you a nod to let you know they're ready, you click off four beats and launch into the first song of your set. You fucking rock the stage, giving it your all. By the time you finish your set, you're exhausted and drenched in sweat, yet you've never felt more alive. Now that you've played live, your addiction to the drums kicks into overdrive. While you're breaking down your kit, some chick walks over and starts flirting with you, telling you how much she liked the way you played. It occurs to you that you've met your very first groupie, take the girl home and get laid. Your band lines up a few more local gigs, and you rock every single one of them. But you feel like you're putting more effort into the band than the other members. As time goes on, you resent them more and more until it gets to the point where you feel you've outgrown them entirely. Part 4. Rockstar Now that you've got several gigs under your belt, you've opened for a few big-name bands and have made connections with some of their members. Since your enthusiasm for the drums is palpable and your playing has continued to improve, when a popular band from your city loses their drummer because he drowned in a pool of his own vomit, they invite you to audition for them. 
Of course, being a big fan of the band yourself, you agree. The audition goes well, and they ask you to be their new drummer. Since you know you don't have time to be in two bands, you've got a choice to make. Stay in your current band that consists of childhood friends for whom you care deeply and have shared countless memories with over the years. Or you can ditch those losers and join an established band made up of dudes you barely know, but who tour all over the world and are assigned to a major label. It's a tough decision, but you make it in a fraction of a second. Via text message, you tell your close friends to fuck off because you quit in the band. And just like that, you're now the drummer for an internationally touring rock band. After weeks of daily band practice, you've learned all the songs and now have a tight set to take on the road. You guys embark on a coast-to-coast -to -coast tour playing in every major city across the country. It's a dream come true. You're getting paid to bang on the drums in front of thousands of people every night. And you don't even have to set them up yourself. You've got a drum technician to do it for you. Though you've now been playing long enough to have learned how to properly tune your drums, you never have to because the drum tech always does it for you. And after every show, without fail, at least a few oddies will come up to you and beg you to do to them what you did to the drums on stage. Bang the living shit out of them. You are now officially a motherfucking rock star. You're living the dream. But you're also now living with herpes from banging so many groupies and diabetes from eating nothing but fast food while being on the road 300 days a year. It doesn't matter that you can't stand your bandmates on a personal level and that on a professional level, you're equally bitter because they all get fat royalty checks from past recordings every month while you don't get shit. You do get to travel all over the world and can say you've been just about everywhere, but you haven't actually seen or done anything because whenever you arrive in a new city, you're only there long enough to perform, sign a few titties, and maybe quickly bang a groupie before having to be back in the van with the sweaty, smelly bandmates you can't stand on your way to a different city for the next show you have planned. But aside from that stuff, it's a dream come true. Every once in a while, you stop to reflect on how far you've come. It feels like just yesterday you were banging on pots and pans with chopsticks in your parents' kitchen. Probably because you were banging on pots and pans in their kitchen yesterday. When you stop by your folks' house to do laundry and eat all their food, since you can't go two minutes without tapping on something, you put together a makeshift drum set to play in the kitchen. Even though you're now used to using only expensive top-of-the-line equipment, you played the hell out of those pots and pans like they were made by Tama and Zildjian. Whether you're on stage or in your parents' kitchen, you love drumming. You always have and you always will. Your fidgety ass couldn't stop banging on shit even if you wanted to. But you don't. You love the drums. It's the perfect instrument. There's no having to worry about frivolous things like melodies and harmonies. No having to learn how to read music or about music theory. Your one and only responsibility is to keep a beat. And now, after thousands of hours of practice, you can hold a steady beat in even the most ridiculous of time signatures. You've become a beast at the drums and have totally mastered them. While that doesn't make you the beast master, it does make you the beat master. You've mastered keeping a beat, you've mastered beating off. The only thing you haven't been able to master is how to do that cool twirly thing with your drumsticks. Which, to most people, myself included, is the one and only criteria we use to judge a drummer. No one cares that you can flawlessly now play every song by Rush, Dream Theater, Tool, and every other band with an awesome drummer. There's really no point in even bothering to learn that stuff if you can't stick twirl, because no matter how good you are at playing the drums, no one is going to take you seriously if you stuck at twirling your sticks. And now you know how drummers go from blow to pro, by learning how to twirl their drumsticks. All that other crap like learning how to keep time and play lots of different beats is just filler. Learning to play drum fills is also filler. If you want everyone to think you're a kick-ass drummer, forget about lessons and rudiments. The only technique you need to learn is how to stick twirl. Keep a pair of Vic Firths in your back pocket with you, but just for show. Give them a twirl in front of everyone you know. Their minds will blow, and they will go. Whoa, that drummer must be a real pro. You're so annoying. Annoying. If you like this shirt, it's available in lots of colors and sizes at musicbeesharp.com, along with lots of other funny music-related merch. Link in the description. If you want access to special episodes of Music Be Sharp, like the best music to listen to while high as fuck, Visit my Patreon page where you can find exclusive content, get early access to regular videos, and more. Link also in the description. And if you'd like to hear some of my music, click that link in the description, or search for this dude on Spotify, YouTube, or wherever else you listen to music.